Let my mouth be filled with your praise, that I may sing aloud. My lips shall shout for joy when I sing to you, Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us prepare for the sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, restorer and lover of innocence, direct the hearts of your servants towards yourself that those you have set free from the darkness of unbelief may never stray from the light of your truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Some who had come down from Judea were instructing the brothers. Unless you are circumcised according to the Mosaic practice, you cannot be saved. Because there arose no little dissension and debate by Paul and Barnabas with them, it was decided that Paul, Barnabas, and some of the others should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and presbyters about this question. They were sent on their journey by the church and passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, telling of the conversion of the Gentiles and brought great joy to all the brethren. When they arrived in Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church as well as by the apostles and the presbyters, and they reported what God had done with them. But some of the party of the Pharisees who had become believers stood up and said, it is necessary to circumcise them and direct them to observe the Mosaic law. The apostles and presbyters met together to see about this matter. The word of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I rejoiced because they said to me, we will go up to the house of the Lord. And now we have set foot within your gates, O Jerusalem. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Jerusalem, built as a city with compact unity, to it the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. According to the decree for Israel to give thanks to the name of the Lord, in it are set up judgment seats, seats for the house of David. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and every one that does he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. 
Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and throw them into a fire and they will be burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Did we just hear this gospel recently, like this past Sunday? I talked about the pruning and the bearing of fruit on this, on this gospel last Sunday. And I said there's, there's a question, and the question is this, because this past year of pandemic has been like an opportunity to do a lot of pruning, uh, to see that which is essential, that which is needed to be, uh, remain on the, on, on the vine, that which is dead, not going to produce any fruit at all, Say so you cut it off, you lop it off, but also things that are suckers that just suck the life out of the vine. Well, those need to be removed. It's sort of like wild growth that it's not going to produce fruit, and all it does is just sap away the energy from the vine. So that, that needs to be removed. But even even the good branches. They need to be trimmed. Uh, they need to be pruned. And the question is this. In this past year, have you become better or have you become bitter? Is the fruit that you have produced better for what we have experienced? Or is it bitter fruit? born from anger, resentment, uh, impatience, intolerance, see nothing good coming from this, you know, blaming God and the world and everyone for this situation we're in. Is the fruit that we have produced made us better or bitter. The pruning is to bring forth fruit and bring good, good fruit. The fruit of kindness and justice and peace and love and generosity and, and patience and, and long suffering. <laughs> that is one of the fruits that Okay, this seems like long, but it, it's not long in comparison to some other things. Have we become better or have we become bitter? I hope that you and I have become better because of this. And the fruit that will come forth once we come through the pandemic, that it, it will be sweet, but that even now we can start to see hints of that good fruit, that sweetness of the kingdom, 
being revealed in our lives and in our relationships with one another and the way that we turn to God in faith and in prayer, knowing that with God, who is the vine grower and knows what he's doing and knows how he wants the vine to bring forth fruit, that we will indeed, with the Holy Spirit that is given to us, bring forth this great fruit of the kingdom. Let us pray. We pray for the church that she may continue the mission of Jesus, announcing the kingdom of God and bringing forth good fruit for the kingdom of justice, peace, and truth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our governments here in our country and throughout the world, that the leaders will be given the wisdom that they need to make the decisions necessary to help combat the, the pandemic and protect people's health and the life and the livelihoods of people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are fearful of receiving the vaccine as if it was something that was meant to kill them rather than to prevent the loss of life, that they may overcome that fear, that God may help them to find peace and also get vaccinated. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those whose lives have indeed become bitter this year because they've experienced death, uh, financial loss, uh, the hardships that they have endured have just made them bitter towards life, towards God, towards other people, that they may experience conversion of heart and know the joy and peace of God's kingdom in their lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those commended to our prayers today, for the repose of the deceased, Martin and Rafaelita Anaya, Ophelia Romero, and Adan Carriaga, may they rest in peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Oh God, we trust in you in your ways in which you act in our lives. We don't always understand, but we trust you. You love us and you want what is good for us. May the pruning we have endured this past year bring forth sweet fruit for the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord, amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. 
Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The Lord has risen and shown his light upon us, whom he has redeemed by his blood. Alleluia. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. 
Body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. Body of Christ. Mm -hmm. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. The Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.